Glenn Blaney, warm welcome to the podcast. I imagine it's been a pretty exciting week for you guys. Yeah, Shema, it's been uh, been great. Um, look, it's the sort of weeks that you you live for and you want to be involved in. So when you've got a final on, it's uh, it's as much fun as you can have in uh, in our sport. So um, yeah, it's been been a great week so far, and um, we've got a little bit of time to go before we get on the plane Friday, and um, then we're away. Yeah, kind of, how's the squad looking? I know there's been a lot of talk this week about which boys are back and fit. Um, you said two out of the three are not going to make it. What about the other one, John Fox? Well, two out of three are unlikely to make it. Ah, okay. okay. Is that a scoop? <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, uh, look, you know, the key thing for me is um, all those guys are on the training field. So that's lovely. Um, the reality is that um, we're going to make sure that if they're going to go on the field, they're going to be ready to play. So that those, those are two different things. So, I don't put any pressure on them to, to say you've got to do this or you, you have to do that or you have to play here and there. We, we will put them on the field when ultimately us and the player you know, agree it's right. And it's one of those things that, that when you're coaching, you, you can look at people and you know they're ready and you, know, you give them enough time and, and kind of the decision takes care of itself. I think if you've got to go and say to, to a player, are you ready? You probably know the answer is no. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I think because every, every player in the – in the modern game, highly likely is going to say, yep, I'll go, I'm playing, I'm ready to go, because that's probably what they think the coach wants to hear. But, you know, for me, it's, it's not the case. So, you know, we just talk to them, we treat them as, as grown-ups. And, uh, you know, some of those guys have been out for a long, a long period of time. And I totally get why there's so much interest around them. Gee, I'm interested, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think... But it must be exciting for you. Obviously, you know, the, these guys really haven't been available since you've been a part of the Scarlets. Nice. So, you know, Thinking ahead, I know Toulon's the game you're concentrating on, but in a couple of weeks' time when the Pro 14 restarts, you're pretty much going to be with a fully fit squad ready to go for, for a new season. Yeah, well, that's the hope. And I think, you know, we, we're trying to plan for any, anything and any eventuality. And, 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 of course, we had the lockdown period, which was a little bit of a blessing and a curse in the same breath. And, you know, it's been a horrendous time for, for the world. And, but as rugby players, I think the challenge of what the bodies go through, I think we found a lot of guys really refreshed and freshened up and actually we're able to do some quality work on, um, on, on the body. And, um, you know, so that for us was a, was a real benefit. And, but you're right, you know, there's certainly some, some big names that, um, you know, in my time here, we've not, we've not seen on the park for the Scarlets. And, you know, we just, want to, we just love to, to put them out there. But the key thing we want to make sure of is uh, if they're out there, that they're, they're, they're the best version of themselves. And, um, you know, almost, almost to the point is a bit of a fan of the Scarlets. I'm, I'm a fan of them too. You know, you sort of think, well, I want to watch these guys play and I want to go, that's him. Not, oh, you know, is he quite ready? You know, that, that's the key. So we, we back our squad. We've got a lot of really good players. And, you know, everyone deserves an opportunity to play. Um, I guess there's just obviously a bit more interest in some of those guys that uh, have, have played for, for some, some bigger teams in red, I suppose. Yeah. Thinking, uh, you're talking, you, you trust the squad. Do you reckon you've got a better squad or a deeper squad now than you had last year? Think about Calum uh, Johnny Williams coming in, um, a, a few others as well. Do you think you've got a, a better team as they were available to you now? Yeah, well, so Tyler Morgan's joined us too and, and Will Hurrell's come in, um, Sam Costello. Yeah. You know, there's, some, there's some wonderful options for us there. Um, I think our squad's getting better each year and, and probably the... the, the, the the thing for us is the World Cup last year um, really gave a lot of guys a lot of exposure. And um, we got a lot of guys out the traps, which, you know, I think Ryan Combe sort of hit the ground running and was, yeah. was devastating. Um, you know, Angus O'Brien, you know, the way he runs the ball, it's like, wow, what a player. Um, so all of those guys that are in our group got lots of exposure. Um, you know, you look back at the opening game against Connett last year, our first game, and Tom Phillips was running around smashing people, which is what he loves to do. <laughs> and um, I'm a massive fan of that. There's no, no trouble with that. So you, you look at, the depth that's been grown over a period of time. And I guess the, the, you know, a, lot, a lot of people will, will rightly focus on some of those guys playing for Wales. But you know, when we look at the, the depth of the group and the, the games that guys played, I think the squad over the course of the season um, where we didn't have the internationals available really grew. And, uh, and that was really, you know, it was really pleasing when you see those guys get an opportunity and take it. You know, someone like Ed Kennedy, you know, taking an opportunity yeah. and um, you know, good on for doing it. Um, so Toulon then, let's, let's give them a bit of attention. It's been a bit of history between both sides over the last, what, three, four years? Been a few yeah. slobber knockers. Um, what do you make of them for this round? Obviously, you had the experience of playing them early on in the season as well. Yeah, we, I think as a club, we can't seem to get away from them. And, and then <laughs> vice versa, I think they must wake up and go, oh, here we go again. Like and a bad rush. 
<laughs> well, you extrapolate forward. There's a good likelihood we're going to face them again in the Champions Cup because the way that the um, their seeding and our seedings come through. So, I don't know. Maybe we're just like soulmates destined to be together. Um, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, we 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 have great games against them, and um, the contests are full blooded and um, full of action. And um, you know, there's some contrasting styles in the way we play, without a shadow of that. And and, and I think that's the reality of you know a big strong French team against a a, a, a strong Welsh team, and and the way we play. Is quite different, and and the way we play is suits the scarlet, suits being West Walian, suits the freedom of expression that we want our boys to have, uh, and and the, the way Talon do it is is their way. So, yeah, I think we um, we give them some attention. We've certainly had a good look at them. We've seen them play the last couple of weeks, and um, you know, look, we like to think that we can impose ourselves on this contest and uh, put our style of play on the park. Yeah, because they've, they've they've gone through a bit of a transitional period themselves, and they kind of last few years they've still got a few big names, Sergio Parisi. Yeah. Just to name one, kind of, I'm an admirer of. Um, but do you think, you know, there's still a massive up front, as you said, contrasting styles. But do you think, kind of, they're not maybe as strong as they were a couple of years ago? Plus, the track probably out there with the weather that's been, it's really going to suit the Scarlets. Yeah, I hope so. It's 28 degrees and more sun coming. I mean, gee, you know, our boys will be taking the sunscreen and, um, you know, really. <laughs> Really get the tans topped up, but uh, look, they're used to that weather. They live there, so whilst it, 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 you know it might suit us, it's definitely going to suit them because that's their environment. So their home environment, one hundred percent, you know, percent suits them. And you know the the great teams they've had, and clearly they've had an ownership change in, in recent times as well. And uh, but when you look through their squad, there's there's still some high quality there. You know, even Estebeth is a, is a an, an amazing athletic lock and. Um, you know, but you look at the tr- the, the path he's fo- followed after. You know, Backy's both was a an icon for them. Ali Williams playing there. You know, Nick Kennedy. You know, these these locks were massive humans. And um, good gods are you know by crikey, what a what a player he he was. Yeah. Um, you sort of go sometimes. You know, you know that t- till on the team in the past, you sort of want to turn up with your autograph book and hope you hope you've got <laughs> a couple of guys ready to to oblige you. And um, but that's the beauty of the challenge, isn't it? That's the beauty of playing the game we play. You want to pit your best against their best, and um, look, I quite like the look of our team. There's no two ways about it. I, I think I, I like the look of what we've got, and uh, I'm quite excited. Because you're, you're bigger up front, I'd imagine now than than you have been. Looking at guys, Ratuva, Luisi, Calamafonia, I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. you've got some big lumps yourselves these days. Yeah, we have, and 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 look, you know, that's that's deliberate. You know, we we look at what what we need to perform, and when you want to play a game that's expansive, you've got to have a platform to build off. And, um, you know, what we, what we're working through with, um, you know, Ben Franks and, and Richard Kelly leading that forwards group is, is to ensure that we've got a platform that allows our playmakers to, to play. And you, you can't expect to turn up throwing the ball around if you don't have a, a foundation and a platform. And those, those foundations in a European context are always set piece and defense. You make sure those are in order, you'll give yourself a chance to play. So, you know, it's been quite deliberate over the last uh, the last you know year and a half or so to to bring some bigger athletes in, and um, you know they're supporting and, and having to earn their way. But uh, yeah, the, the, there's options that we've got that give us a chance to play a myriad of different ways. And I think the thing you want to make sure of is that the side complements itself, and uh, you know the, the boys certainly enjoy each other's company, and the characters are coming out, and um, you know that's what you want to see is that, that, that they're happy to to play together, and and, and they're very comfortable going to a dark place when it gets really tough. And, you know, when you look at a side and, you know, the backs are against the wall, that's when you see character and, um, you know, always looking at each other in the eyes and going, yeah, I'm okay, I'm here. This is tough, but we'll get through it and we'll come out the other side and then we'll flourish. So that's the type of side you want to put together. And, um, you know, look, we're, we're moving towards that. You know, we've got some, some great men that, uh, that are going to play this weekend and, uh, and, and for the future. So it's exciting. Um, thinking, looking back, you had those two games um, that started with the derby. You say start of the season. Okay? I can never remember if it's start of the season or end of the season. It, 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 the start <laughs> of the finish. I think it was the start yeah. of the end of the season. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Um, so the two games you had, the derby games you had, bonus points, max points out, out of both of them. Mm. Assess those two games for me. Kind of, what, did you get out of them what you wanted um, in terms of play development, just game sharpness? Yeah, we did. Um, look, it was a really interesting period and, and, and testament must go to our performance crew for the way our boys were, were managed back and, and were able to reintegrate, get the contact collision stuff. And, and there was a, an enormous amount of constraints that we were following for COVID, which really understandable, but it, you know, it, really, it meant we had to think in a different way. Um, so we had some really long days. The first three weeks, we're only allowed to train in groups of up to 10. So how that worked was each group would have an hour in the gym and an hour in the field. 
So the coaching group, management group, were up on the field for six hours, which was brilliant. You know, we loved every minute of it. I mean, it was like we were a bit dry at the end of the day and probably earn a, earn a, earn a quite, uh, quite beer on the side. But, uh, gee, it was brilliant. It was great fun. And, um, you know, that for us was just an opportunity rather than, oh, it's going to hurt our program. So I think what we wanted to be in the opening two games was, was conditioned, uh, fit, contact ready so that the boys were safe. Um, they were the they were the key things, and we wanted to ensure we came out of those games with the guys that played in in a better place than they were before they went on. Oh, you're not coming off with a knock that, that was going to take them out. So, I think we we pretty much achieved that. Um, we got enough exposure to to the group. Um, we didn't treat it as let's just give everyone 20 minutes, which would be the normal way for effectively the first run out of the season. We treated it as a derby match, pro 14 competition game. And, um, and we went out to, to, to be the best version of ourselves that we could be. So coming out of it, yeah, we, we were pretty happy with where we were at. It gave us plenty of things to work on because there were times we were tested and, you know, there was a lot of resilience shown in a couple of moments and um, yeah, we learned a lot from it. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, we, we were reasonably happy. Uh, in that Dragons game, Ken Owens rightly so got a lot of um, plaudit for his 250th appearance. Probably one of the boys want to know is, um, did you have a bit of a shindig after the match for it to celebrate his uh, achievement? Well, well, I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm not sure. um, but he was wearing his cap at the end of the night. I, I remember I, I had a quite, uh, quite drink with him, him and his dad and Jake Ball. We, we were sort of last men standing, and there was the proud skip wearing his two fiftieth cap. It was brilliant for him. Um, the irony is, as he's told Samson Lee, his 251st cap was coming on at tight because he had to come back on for Samson later in the game. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's claiming 251, I think. Um, and in fairness to him, he, he really has had a couple of deep and meaningful conversations with Samson about sort of the intricacies of playing tight at, at a senior level. So um, I'm sure Samson has been delighted with the advice he's uh, received. Um, but look, you know, in, in all seriousness, uh, you know, Ken is... He's a great bloke. He's really great, great to work with. Really professional. The team is the first thing on his mind. Whatever's good for us is good for him, um, and that's why he's got to two fifty. He's looked after himself, and he really deserved that opportunity to reflect on on a great career. Um, so you've had a, basically a week off. Is it a week off? Um, a weekend off yep. between that game and this week. Will that having that one week off break suit you more than the two long, the two long side? They've obviously played on Sunday, you know, two games, play Sunday, short turnaround. Are they going to be match hardened or a bit softened up? What do you think? Oh, look, I think the, the difficulty is we couldn't have done it any other way. So, you know, when we looked at um, our prep, we'd gone nine weeks to the Dragons game uh, of, of a training program, which delivered contact collision, all that stuff, plus two games. So it's quite a long stretch to go. So we, we, we put an individual training week, which had a bit of regeneration um, in. So boys had a, had a clean seven days to, to freshen up and, uh, and stick to their own programs. And then we got them in and we've had a two-week build-up. So uh, that's given us a chance to stress the collision stuff. Um, we put a bit of that in last week to give us a bit of a hit. Quite how it plays out will be exactly that. You know, they, they played Sunday night to London and, and it's a six-day turnaround for them. So look, Slightly different challenges, but they're not they're not unlike each other in that you know they're going to come in off the back of a game having to have more recovery, and we've got plenty of recovery having to sort of harden up a bit. So um, yeah, look, it's going to be interesting to see how how, how it folds out and, and which team's best. But uh, that's that's the key to the contest, isn't it? We can't change the schedule, so just have to get on with it. Yeah, uh, so can I ask you about Steph Evans? Obviously, he's had a lot of attention as well. Um, he's been looking yeah. sharp the last few games. Uh, dodgy haircut, probably worse than mine at the moment. Um, I reckon you can get there. I just, just cut those. You know, it's you sort of all business at the top and party sort of at the back. That's really. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I think you could cut the sides in there, and it would. Um, yeah, it'd be great. Are you handy with pair of scissors? Are you? <laughs> uh, no, don't be afraid of it. I, if you look at my haircuts, I mean, my lockdown haircut was I didn't cut my hair for the whole time, so I came out of it looking like Grizzly Adams, um, <laughs> which. Uh, yeah, it, it went pretty quick because it was a shambles. <laughs> so, uh, but no, Steph's getting a lot of attention. Uh, his hair's taken on its own Twitter handle, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but look, hey, he's he, uh, he's a free spirit and uh, he's playing really well at the moment. Yeah, kind of what's kind of clicked for him? Obviously, kind of he, he lost a bit of weight kind of a couple of years ago. Then he's obviously back on track. He, he's firing on cylinders. Um, is there a reason why he's just kind of content within himself? Well, I think he's he's the one who's made. If there was any change or anything to be done, he's the one who's made it. You know, he's yeah. he's really focused. He's really diligent and deliberate with the work he does. Uh, his extras program is well planned. Um, you know, he's really leading us in a lot of a lot of those areas. So when 
you know, when I'm as a defence coach, I'm looking around for the, the on the tackle mats at the end of the day. He's first in the queue and, and he loves it and, and gets in there and, and gets stuck in. And I look, you know, he, he's really he's really flourishing and you know, testament to him that he's playing well because he's the one who's who's, who's put the work in and got prepared to play. And um, you know, I just I just love it when he gets the ball in his hands because he's uh, he's a special player and uh, that's what the game needs. You know, we we pick Steph for what he can do, which is he can score tries and um, don't ask me how he does it. I don't know, <laughs> but he does. And yeah. uh, and long may it continue. Um, I read something this week. He, he was interviewed. Um, he said you worked a lot with him defensively last year. Um, he developed a lot under there. He's developed a lot under you uh, this year as well as head coach. Um, but what he, one thing he did say was you're a bit more old school than than Brad <laughs> was. What did he mean about, about being old? I've got no idea what that means. Uh, gee, old school. Is, is he trying to say I'm old? Because well, I know Brad looked like, like Brad looked like he's twenty. <laughs> you know, maybe he thinks Brad's like his own age. The irony is Brad and me are the same age, but when you put us together, I don't think anyone would suggest that. So <laughs> I, I think he might just need to check my birth certificate and see oh, I'm actually not that old. <laughs> um, take me back to, to, I can't remember it was now, when, when Brad announced he was leaving, obviously I think everybody in the Scarlet's family were, were chuffed to bits on his behalf that he'd yeah. uh, got the, the Kiwi, the All Blacks job. Um, it must have been sort of strange for you, bittersweet in one way, Obviously, you got a head coach role, but it was strange that the unit that all came in at the same time to take up the job a couple of years ago um, broke apart so early. Oh, look, really proud of him for for, for where he's got to, and um, you know, I couldn't think of a, a more deserving guy to to get that opportunity. And um, he's done it out of sheer hard work and perseverance. And he's you know, his route through is quite different to a lot of other people. He, he was a, he's a qualified lawyer, he's a partner in a firm, and then he he, he sort of threw it in to get into coaching, which is his passion. And uh, it's taken him across the world into some challenging places and led him to, to the Scarlets, which, um, look, he, he still loves it. You know, he's still still in touch with what we're doing. And, um, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's just how you found him is how he is. And I think that's the, the testament to the way he connects with, with people. So, you know, as a mate, I'm, I'm really proud that he's got the opportunity to, to do something that, that we'd all love to do. And uh, I know it'll make a big difference to, to that program. And, you know that that left us with an opportunity here, and um, yeah, look, I was only too too happy to, to to throw my hat in the ring and um, and apply, and and went through the process. And um, look, you know, I was incredibly proud that the club uh, asked me to do it. So um, no hesitation to say, yeah, I'm on. It was like, right, we're we're, all, we're in. We started. Let's go. You know, it was it was it was a brilliant moment for for Claire and me, the kids, because the whole family's invested in it, and that's that's the way the game is. But. You know, um, Josh, you know, albeit this year, he hasn't been able to come to training because of COVID. But last year through preseason, he's at training whenever he's off school. He's out there carrying the balls, whatever he needs to do. So for us, it's um, it's a really deep connection. And, and, and as I say, I was chuffed a bit to, to, to get the opportunity to take it on. And also to continue working with, with Richie Whiffen and, and Di Flanagan. Um, outstanding coaches. Great for the club. Uh, wonderful in their approach and they, they get the most out of that back unit and then this year obviously we've got Ben Franks and, uh, and Richard Kelly who have, have joined our group so um, we're still moving in the same direction yeah I think that's the key you know there was never ever a revolution coming uh, I was certainly across and, and part of Brad's plans and you know we'd spoken long and deep before we got here about what it looked like and what he wanted it to look like and you know, my job was to support that and um, you know that, that was 100% the focus so you know the the journey that we started together. You know my my aim is to continue that and and to and to continue, you know what we want, which is to 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 bring success to 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 the scarlets and uh, and to develop a group of men that can can be put into really tough, challenging occasions in big games and to have the tools to to be successful. That's what we want, and uh, and that's what we're we're out to continue doing. Um, talking through the decision to bin, bring Ben in uh, into the coaching setup, but how do the boys react to having? You know, a fresh face could have probably much, many of them haven't spent much time personally with him. Maybe played against him a few times. Yeah, yeah, no, they have played a, a bit against him. You know, look at Sam's Ken, Rob Evans. That that'll actually probably suited up against him. And um, I look, you know, Ben's a, um, a a really technically brilliant and gifted guy who's learned. You know, the, the teaching process is coming across well. And I think, you know, we've we've been scrumming well, which is one of you know one of his main core areas of um, responsibility. Rich Kelly, core area of the line and the drive, but. Yeah, Ben's doing more around the defence aspect and um, the collisions, those sorts of things, which, uh, you know, for him, he loves. You know, he loves that combative, competitive part of the game. That's how he played. 
um, to have have the experience he has for our front rowers, and that that extends right down to our, our youngsters. You know, Harry O'Connor from our academy is up doing some work with us at the minute, and really benefiting from from the coaching he's get from getting from Ben. Um, and again, you know, the senior guys, uh, are, are, they've got a plan together that, that the ball work through and all the skill set elements, you know, Ben leads them on and he's doing a great job. You know, as, as is Rich Kelly with the line out, you know, the, the detail that he's, he's going to there, you know, he's a real technician, but he's come through our system through the academy. So we actually worked with Rich last year. So when you look at the evolution of our coaching group, there's only uh, only one new guy in there um, and that's Ben. So, uh, you know, I'm really pleased with, with how he's going. Uh, in terms of of West Wales talent, you know the guy you've, you've mentioned a few guys coming through the ranks. I know I made a list here. I was having a look earlier, kind of of new faces. You've mentioned Sam Costello coming in. Carwin Tupalotu is one that you know was a, an animal for his age. And it, uh, yeah, think, gee, what a oh, he's great fun, isn't he? Yeah, kind of. You know, how talented are the boys coming through the, the setup? And it's probably a question I always ask um, new coaches into new region, especially into Wales as well. How do young Welsh talent compare to talent, say in England, when you worked with them back in New Zealand as well? Well, I guess the um, the one thing that we did certainly um, in my time in England was, if we were looking for young talent that could play rugby, we always had a look here. We always had a look at Scarlets because uh, the boys can play. The skill sets are great, and I think the further west you go, the less round balls you find. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, the, the more you find guys with a with an oval thing in their hands and they're doing this and, and, and that's that's how they are. So I think the the influence of uh, of football, particularly with young youngsters growing up. So I've got two sons, both can play football. You wanna you wanna watch me try and play? I've got no idea. Hopeless. But they've grown up with it. You know, so they've grown up with a ball at their feet. Whereas I think our boys out here in West Wales grow up with a ball in their hands and it promo- it promotes hand eye and and, and and an ability to to play a game. Um, that's, that's rugby. So, you know, we have got wonderfully talented youngsters coming through who, who just love the game and there's no other distractions. So it's a, it's a great canvas to start painting with. And then obviously you, you take that and you try and refine it and you're constantly looking for, for the next guy that will come through. And I think we've got a wonderful history of guys, you know, from West Wales progressing to represent the Scarlets and then going to, to Wales and, uh, and long that continue, you know, our job is not only the here and now, but it's the custodianship of what happens in the future, you know, after we, after we've gone and uh, you know, you want to, you want to leave somewhere in a better place than you found it. And I think that's a responsibility that, that all of us coaches take incredibly seriously. We, we, we want to ensure that the long-term prosperity of the Scarlets um, is something that's, that's there. And uh, you know, when our time's up, we, we get to, to turn into super fans and jump on, Dan, Dan Vaughan's trips and give it a full hundred. Um, <laughs> yeah. They are some great trips. So, you know, look, that's that's kind of the the, the, the overarching role is to make sure those youngsters come through. And Carmen's just, you know, one of many. There's a wonderful group of young men coming through, which um, I'm really excited about. Um, speaking about somebody maybe who's got international ambitions, Johnny Williams, um, you know, he's probably fast-tracked into contention and coming to the scouts. What have you made of him since joining? And how well did you know him from your London Irish days? Yeah, look, Johnny came through really young. Uh, he was in the ACE program, which is an attached academy program through a, a college um, over at London Irish. So he came through there and at the age of 18 um, was starting in the premiership, which um, he was on merit. So he, he physically was able to, to deal with it, but he was actually a, you know, able to play at that level, which is amazing really for a lad of that, that age. And, you know, he's uh, he went to, to Newcastle and you know, then he had some challenges, some health issues, which he's overcome, which is um, testament to him. He's, he's, he's approached that brilliantly and um, now it's his opportunity to, to settle and um, you know when we when we had a profile issue in the squad with Parksy moving on it was like right, we need someone who can give us you know some of those things that we're going to need and, and and what we got with Johnny is someone who can deliver a bit of that and he's got a you know, different player uh, to Parksy. Parksy is a legend of these parts. Um, great bloke and, and Johnny will do it in his own way so you know look he's settling in really well and uh, you know he's only 23 so he's still a young man and he's got plenty of rugby ahead of him and the one thing I like about Johnny is he's very grounded. Uh, he's, he's not getting ahead of himself. He's just trying to get better every day and what will be will be. And um, you know, I think uh, with the middle name he's carrying, he's, 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 you know, he's clearly one of us out here. So uh, long might continue him improving. And if that gives uh, Wayne and, and, and the lads in Wales an option at some point in time, then you know, great, um, great for them to take that. Um, I've asked a couple of guys on, on social media to, to get in touch um, if they have any questions for you. Um, I, I like this first one, so, so brace yourself, okay? <laughs> right. uh, John Richards got in touch on Twitter and 
he asked, he's asking you, are you a high protein, low carb type of guy or a vegan fanatic? No, keto, totally different. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally different. Uh, and now Tom James got me onto keto. So so TJ's doing some wonderful work in the personal training space, and he went on this um, keto thing in seven weeks, literally halved himself. And um, look, I'm not a small fella. Uh, and I do enjoy my food, and you've got to be quite careful when you're not running as fast as or far as you probably should do. Uh, so no, I've I've gone down that way. But um, yeah, no, the I suppose there's a bit of high protein in there. Um, the vegan stuff. No, I've got a daughter who's, who's sort of veggie vegan, that sort of thing. So yeah, plant based a little bit. But um, oh, look, you know, I'm I'm, I'm fairly. This is probably where I'm old fashioned. <laughs> yeah, maybe, so, yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe I'm just old fashioned. But let's face it with Tom James. He's ripped anyway, isn't he? So I don't know what type of on. He'd be massive. Silly. I'm unbelievable, Mac. I mean, it's embarrassing at times you go, oh, how do you get like that? Because I never, ever look like that. No, uh, yeah, neither have I. Not in my prime. Um, Chris Ed's gone to touch as well. You know, it's probably a tough question because you, you're still only young in one way in terms of your, your Scarlet Korean, considering mm. COVID as well. Favourite Scarlet memory or moment so far? Okay. Um, Favourite memory. Right. I would suggest coming out of the hotel in Toulon last year on the way into the game. Okay. And I'd never seen anything like it. The, the supporters were there by George. You know, they, they put a tunnel between us and the, and the ground because they're, they're reasonably, you know, close enough. And they just were 100% behind us. I don't think I've ever experienced supporters doing that in my life. And it was pretty humbling and quite emotional in terms of, wow, it was just amazing. And then... When we came back and we'd not quite got there and we were feeling a bit down and dejected and they were in the bar and they just picked us all up. Mm. And it was like, what a club. You know, you, you think people have spent their money to travel and, and come on this trip and they're proud of us when we went out, that we're their team. Mm. And we were still their team at the end of the day, even though we, we hadn't quite got the result, we were still their team and they just, they were amazing. And then to to cap that off, almost one of the last games we played was away at London Irish, which is a club obviously I know well, and I know the people there, there's some wonderful people in that club too. And, you know, we, we managed to get the job done down there, which um, was great. We played we played pretty well. And I think, we, you know, our, our supporters had, had more or less taken over the stadium and, and the way they were singing. And, you know, we, we got, we're on the pitch and we got to spend a bit of time with them over the far side of the, of the ground. And those are the moments that you remember. I think you... you you can remember scores if you're really pushed on it and you sort of see, oh, that's what, you know, that's what happened. But I think those are the memories that, um, that, that stick with you forever. So, you know, I think that, that coming out of the door and that hotel in too long, I don't think I'll ever forget that. Um, talk about comparing clubs then and, and, and leagues. What have you made of the Pro 14 in general? Because, you know, we, we always back here compare English rugby being, you know, juggernauts and, and a different style you know, probably a bit jealous at times of the crowds they get um, in mm. some of their stadiums. What have you made from, from your experience of, of being London Irish, um, being New Zealand, you know, the styles of rugby, but, you know, what and how can the Pro 14 improve to maybe match some of the crowds the English again get in? Well, I think you can. I think what we have is we have games that are quite diverse and, and, and we'll see what happens in the debate over the global season. I think the one challenge we always have is we have so many international players away at large chunks. So, you know, that, that brings a real contrast of, of games. So you can go from, a, say, a fully loaded international internationals available links to be Scarlets, which for all intents and purposes could effectively be Ireland playing Wales. And then you go to a game where they're not available and it's almost like, well, this is, you know, some guys who are learning and developing. So they're at a different stage of their, um, of their journey. So there's a much broader bandwidth in terms of the, um, the, the, the competitive nature of the games. The intensity is always the same, but just, you know, when you've got that much variability in the squads and, and the way that you're able to operate it, it just, just means it's slightly, slightly different. Uh, the Premiership in England, the vast majority of the games with the agreement they have, those internationals are available. Uh, Super Rugby international rugby doesn't get in the way of the competition so they're always there for the whole time so you get them in the preseason or a bit of the preseason, and then they're there for you for the season uh Moda 10 cup is a is a fairly development led competition but as you're seeing at the moment the first two rounds of that are pretty much the best player the all blacks are all playing which is which is yeah. brilliant for the competition so there's a bit of a smattering of that how Moda 10 cup is at the moment with a little bit of what we do um, I think the standard is we can certainly compete with the very best in England without without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I think that that that's very much 
uh, there for us. So I don't compare one as being better than the other. I think we take the opportunity that we have within Pro 14, and it's a wonderfully diverse competition, South African, Italian, Irish, English, Welsh, Scottish. It's, it's pretty uh, pretty cool place to be. Um, there's lots going on, and uh, you know that's the competition we're in. So um, our context is a, a West Whalian team playing in the Pro 14, and we'll, we'll do it the best we can. Um, what are your hopes then for, for I see this looking casting ahead a bit further? You know, you're obviously kind of start of your of your head coach tenure in one way. Where do you want to take the team, and and where do you kind of see that the team ending up? Because obviously Leinster, in terms of winning everything, they're, they're a pretty tough opponent to try and knock off the perch. Of course they are, but they they got there through hard work and perseverance, and I think you'll get nothing for free in in this game. So, what what choice do we have? Our choice is we want to be the best version of ourselves we can be, and develop players that have, that have long careers and successful careers. So as long as we, we kind of take care of every day and maximise what we're going to get out of every day and every moment in that day, the next day should be able to be built upon. So I don't sit there and say, oh, in five years we want this and three years we want that. I just say, right, what, what does today look like and how can we get through today and be better at the end of it? And, you know, that, that's always been my approach. So, you know, we'll get back into the office tomorrow morning and we'll have a coach's meeting and we'll have a couple of coffees and we'll just, you know, the boys will bring energy and we want to end up better at the end of the day. And that's the whole squad, everyone, right from the guys who, who are rehabbing or preparing to, to train play to, to the guys who are fully ready for too long. Everyone needs to go home tomorrow better. And I think if we, if we take it that way, then the future hopefully will take care of itself. Um, as you mentioned, too long, we'll, we'll close on too long. Then um, it's going to be a strange experience traveling as a bubble. You've got a chartered flight, if I'm correct, going out. Um, you're going to be with each other all weekend. The important question is, who's going to be the social secretary for the weekend? Oh, yeah. No, they're on top of it. That's, um, that's I think, I believe, and, and I've had a couple of conversations today, uh, Johnny McNichol, Josh McLeod, and Dan, uh, Daniel Jones. Okay. Um, and you couldn't think of three better guys to, to do that. So it could be it could be a lot of fun. Um, I, I think they'll nail it. Um, yeah. But that's pretty critical. When you, when you look at the, the way we're going to have to travel, you've got to have some things that can keep our minds moving and, um, stay off the off the bed for long periods. You know, we don't want to have that because it'll just take the energy out of us. So um, the attitude is we're going to go and have a great time, uh, enjoy every moment, and that includes the game. Um, and, you know, the game will be full of ebbs and flows, but, uh, you know, we're going to get over there Friday and a bit of a captain's run, and then um, the social committee will kick in to uh, overdrive, I'd expect. <laughs> uh, and I can't wait to see what they've got planned for us because I'm sure it'll be, sure it'll be good they haven't let you into the itinerary yet. No, gee, no, that's well, that's way above me. There's no way they'll tell me that. I just have to turn up and join in. Um, okay, good. And, and at some point, I can absolutely take an assumption that they'll line one of the coaches up to uh, get stuck in doing. I'm just praying it's not me. <laughs> good stuff. I hope you could have keep your head beneath that precipice then, uh, and enjoy the weekend. Enjoy good. the weekend, and hopefully, cross fingers, you'll have a positive result to bring back to West Wales as well, and we can look forward to a semi final. Yeah, well, that's the, that, that's the hope, isn't it? So we'll, we'll get stuck into it and um, give it our best. And, uh, hey, great to catch up. And um, no doubt we'll catch up again soon. Cheers, Len. Diolch yn fawr iawn. Pob luck.